and the 20% over and above, which you get to give them their money back, you split up and so pro rata for them. You also get paid pro rata on how much money you bring into the fund. So in the six, six and a half year, okay, you better have invested all the fucking money because you went out in seven. And the best time to, to, to get people uh, uh, money from private equity uh, or get them to make a decision is when they're coming up to that seventh year mark. And sometimes it's six and a half, sometimes it's eight and a half, but it's roughly seven. And um, so um, the, they had made an, an investment in this company, let's say in the one first, second year, and uh, it didn't work out. Remember, the private equity model, a third go ba bankrupt. Roughly, a third break even, and a third make money. And within the third that make money, they're looking for a Facebook or something like that. And there's only a very small number of that fall into that Facebook, Google, etc., Uber, whatever. So the myth is that motivated sellers aren't private equity. That's crap. I, I know that for 50 years. And me trying to tell you that, meatheads, you don't believe it because you're so inundated. You, you put private equity and uh, the uh, hedge fund guys uh, up there on some pedestal. They're fucking meatheads just like you. So we can do them a favor too by getting... Yeah, well, they, they won't call it a favor, but anyway, <laughs> they're saying that you're a bottom feeder cocksucker and you want to take an advantage. Of, yeah, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> But the other thing is that the, uh, one of the investors had been a bank from an SBA. And, and, norm and normally, the private, it's, there's, the, there's early investors, there's, well, in startups, there can be seed investors where they put up money on concepts. Then there's early investors, and there's uh, normally first, second, third, fourth round. The third round guys are normally taking out the seed and the first and second round. The fourth round guys are taking out the second and third round. Okay, that's how it works, yeah. And but this deal that he he turned around, there were uh, unhappy campers, mm -hmm. and they, they wanted out, and uh, that's why you see when you see private equity guy left ABC private equity to join XYZ private equity, I mean it's because he hadn't made any money, and he, or they can see the fund the, the seven year fund isn't going to make any money, so they sometimes get signing bonuses to go to another private equity. Signing bonuses. Uh, and private equity or hedge funds the last 10 years have underperformed the market. Okay? Private equity, uh, uh, only a small fraction of, of the uh, private equity funds uh, or venture capital funds have outperformed the market. Most of them don't outperform the market. So um, the, the, the thing that he ran was uh, had um, three private equity and had a um, SBA bank loan that were, had underperformed. And when he was sitting in my office, I mean, it took me about 100 millionth of a second. You're going to this. And his eyes, you know, lit up. And um, not dissimilar to Deb, the guy that you saw early on, who had been 27 years doing it for somebody else, a billionaire. And um, the, uh, I told him how to do it. And, and his is more, much more complicated than what you, you're going to do. Because he's dealing with professionals, people that ostensibly are smarter than you. Uh, they're not really, but the, the, and so uh, he navigated and he hired an investment bank, et cetera, et cetera. And this was just prior to the close. It's now closed. And then Sally and I met him for a drink a couple months ago in New York. And um, I told you, like, the Back to the Future, you know, that skateboard you slide around on. He, he wasn't walking on the ground when he walked into the fucking bar. I mean, he looked down, it looked like he floated in. And uh, he was happy as shit, you know. I mean, well, neither say he's happy as shit, and very thankful, and I'm appreciative. And uh, he subsequently, uh, I believe, he closed another deal. He closed this deal, and um, he formed a new board. Uh, of the old board, he kept a couple for the new board for Nuco from the old board. But uh, they, they, there was a conf There has to be a conflict. Cause, and now, because of corporate governance, they're worried about. I made a decision now. And, uh, you know, I, am I making the decision for the right reasons? One of the asshole shareholders is going to sue me. And so uh, they were very careful. It took longer than it should because of the corporate governance issues. Everybody had a fucking lawyer <laughs> or a group of lawyers. And, um, but he got it done. And um, he's, you know, 
and he, unlike uh, most, shared a third of the booty or the, the riches with his team. I, I haven't seen that happen too often in 50 years. Um, but he is a guy that, you know, uh, the same came with eight cents in his pocket. You know, same old shit, you know. And, and so he felt grateful to his team. And so he gave a third of the, the riches to the team, which in this particular case was a little over 10 million bucks, which ain't, ain't chump change. By team, you mean his? I mean, no, 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 no. To his other senior executives who were part of the sales, part of this, part of that, he shared it. But he took the lion's share, uh, two thirds, and the um, and like I said, he turned twenty thousand dollars because that's how he couched. How much am I going to get my investment back? I, I I don't do it that way. He got a thousand times his investment back. He got. Or uh, twenty million, or uh, thirty million on on twenty thousand, whatever that is, and um, and now he's he's off and running. Um, the um, but he 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 had uh, he, pro during this process, he moved from the eighteenth floor to the fifty eighth floor. He went from a, uh, a high price car to a, a more higher price car, uh, and uh, he. Um, he changed his lifestyle. I said, you know, this is going to happen, so get used to uh, the trappings, and um, he'll sell out to a strategic or another private equity, because uh, now he uh, has uh, him personally, he's turned this around, he's recapitalized it, and so I mean, and now he has a track record, and uh, whether he, he'll be CEO, I'm, I'm almost positive he'll do his next deal as CEO. But he might not. So, what's some of the um, takeaways? Yeah. He's constantly programming his mind and keeping it in QLA. Mode yeah, yeah. Uh, Deb and all these guys say that they listen. They, Deb used the words he immer immersion. Remember, and somebody asked one of you asked me what it meant. That's what it means. And the um, it doesn't make me feel good that people are uh, running around uh, jogging tracks with me in their ear. I mean, believe me, I, I, that doesn't uh, do anything for me. But um, the, uh, and they're constantly when they're in the automobiles. You heard Dr. Joe, he listens to me uh, going to the surgery, coming back from the surgery when he's in the gym. Um, but virtually all of them do the same thing. Some do it more, some do it less. He said that, you know, he, uh, uh, he should say his affirmations more. Um, uh, Napoleon Hill, and I'm not saying Napoleon Hill is, is the gold standard, but Napoleon Hill uh, said uh, that you should say your affirmations 10 times a day. Uh, I never said it to, uh, twice a day, once in the morning when I get up. Uh, I don't do that anymore. I only do it at night before I go to sleep, and then I say my prayers, I fall asleep saying my prayers. But uh, for a lot, a lot of years, I mean, you, can, you know, it was in the morning when I woke up. And to this day, I'm sitting there, and uh, Sally has fallen asleep, and I'm saying my affirmations uh, before I go to sleep. Anything else about uh, Roberto? You mentioned about habits, and you also said that yes, your your habits. So, what are some of these good? Well, habits? I mean, well, his good habits was he he worked 60, 70 hours a week anyway. Okay. Uh, his good habits was he's uh, a, a physical exercise. He went to the gym almost every day. Uh, whether uh, salts is a good habit or a bad habit, I don't know. But anyway, um, uh, he, uh, he, he got involved. Uh, uh, he knew his business well enough to get involved and take over the sa direct sales. And, and I mean, and, and most CEOs can't do that. But because he came up the ladder, he came up through marketing and sales. It was a, a no-brainer for him. He um, uh, he uh, understands the sales funnel. That was a habit I didn't teach him uh, because he came up through marketing and sales. If you've been in any kind of sales and you've been successful, I mean, you understand the sales funnel. And we have more than one funnel. Um, and then the additional habits uh, were affirmations, goals, and uh, the, uh, the goals that he had set down on the paper, just like you sent to me, uh, were, you know, not, not meager. From where it comes from, they're not meager, but meager by, in the sense of creating generational wealth, uh, you know, he, so he, he created um, 
Now, $30 million isn't generational wealth to me, but for just about 99% of everybody else that walks on the planet, $30 million is generational wealth. And he did it in less than a year. He did it in less than a year. So uh, generational wealth to me is a couple hundred million. But the, uh, and so he was able to do that. Of course, now he, uh, uh, he's, and he sounds, and this is just before it closed. Uh, he, he's a believer. You know, he's a zealot. Nothing like a convert, you know, a convert Catholic, convert to, to being sober, you know, they're zealots. And uh, he is certainly, uh, certainly that, as Sally will attest to. She says, God, he looks so happy. <laughs> well, it's... Money to live by happiness. Uh, well, you, you, amen, dear, amen. And uh, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, so he's different, right? He's just... Doing a takeover of his own company. Yeah, but I mean, some of the some of the guys that come through here, like Anelli, he, he he he's allowing his people to buy him out. Yeah. Okay, uh, but I mean, some of the guys that have businesses that are uh, that are worth a shit, uh, they uh, either if they want to walk away, they allow the employees to buy him. him or if they want to keep it and build upon that company, then their first acquisition is themselves. Themselves, and, and they're, uh, I won't say they're slam dunk to finance, but they're almost slam dunk, they're rubber stamp uh, to finance because you don't have to explain about anything. You build the business and you're gonna be, it's gonna be your first acquisition. Sometimes you make it in conjunction with another acquisition you bolt on. And um, the, uh, that's assuming free cash flow covers debt service. If you're, now most of the businesses that come here, you ought to turn the key. Meaning just shut them down, walk away. Don't go through any sales process, just fucking walk away and, and get away, run like a thief in the night. Because as I said, I believe on the first afternoon, you've really just bought yourself a job, you've bought yourself a, a, a salary, and in most cases, not even a high, pay, high, high, high paying salary. But for those that actually have something worth salvaging, saving, et cetera, then um, I uh, strongly recommend that your, um, your first acquisition be you. And, uh, the, and in his particular case, it was him. Uh, and um, the um, and the, the shareholders were big time funds, big time PE guys. You'd, you'd recognize the names uh, because remember, two thirds of the investments they make, or uh, one third of the investments they make go bankrupt, and one third of the investments they make uh, break even, but they still may be cash flowing. And so, um, assuming that you can build upon that, I mean. They're good candidates, and that's why I say that uh, pension funds, insurance companies, are candidates. Not just you know, uh, not not for your first deal. First deal is better mom and pop, so you can learn some skills because um, buying assets from an insurance company uh, or a pension fund uh, is uh, difficult. This this probably took twice as long. Uh, that it should have because it was dealing with professional investors that were wor worried about, as he alluded to, corporate governance issues. They had to be very careful that they're not going to get sued. So, and, and when everybody has a lawyer, I mean, uh, you know, there's five lawyers, there's seven opinions, you know, because two law lawyers and law firms got two opinions. And everybody, you know, but, but, he, but he got it done. And, um, He's, you know. Yeah, so he is growing his equity and he's just doing organically. He's no, what well, well, this deal. Yeah. But now he's buying. Now he's going to do the you know, revenue, the QLA model. Yeah. Well, I mean, this first deal, he had 1%. I mean, it was nothing. It for some preferred, preferred shares. So what? Um, the, uh, but the, um, he had preferred shares, but he had an integral knowledge of the business because he was. The CEO, not, not, nothing untoward or uh, immoral or illegal. I mean, it happens. You read about the LBOs all the time. You don't pay attention to them when you hear them announced. Uh, but they happen. And the, the LBO stand for? Hmm? Leverage buyout. Oh. LBO. And the, 
I mean, I know you hear them on the news, but you know, you, you don't pay attention. But it's somebody or a group within the company buying, them, buying themselves. That's what that is. And all debt, no equity. Although during the interviewing process, and during uh, with the uh, investment bank and all the investment banks that were interviewed, I think there was ten or twelve, wanted uh, you know uh, to give their M and A advice, their advisory service, and, and and slam them with some equity in there, which higher fees. But he uh, was able to get it done. I, I looked at it and I said, this, uh, even if you fuck this up, you don't need any equity, you know. And if anybody shows you a fucking spreadsheet that shows equity, I mean. Eliminate them. You're not hiring them because they're all brain dead. Something's not right. Other than they want to generate fees. Other than and most of them. If I, when I used to be in that business, and I used to be in that business, I understand you want to generate fees. Advisory fees and acquisition fees and blah, blah, blah fees. But it was, it, it was um, easy, e easy peasy, as my daughter would say, because, I mean, the cash flow was strong. Uh, was strong. And the cash flow was strong based on him turning around the business. And um, so, I mean, it was, it was literally a no-brainer. <clears throat> so one, one normally, not normally, but, you know, almost every seminar has got one guy or one gal in there that should do like this. Deb was a, couple, a few seminars ago. Uh, we had some... Uh, we had a, some Cubans here a couple of seminars ago. The the uh, Cuban gangsters. It was it was a, it was a no brainer for them to buy their own business. Um, the uh, it, it just is. Now, if you're in industry A and uh, and it's it's a candidate to 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 buy, but you're going to go into industry B, then it's not unless you're going to build a conglomerate, and I'm not a big proponent of building conglomerates because it sounds good on paper, but there's a lot of issues with conglomerates. But if uh, you're in Industry A and you're going to go into Industry B, then uh, and you sell your business to your employees, and you do an employee uh, scheme where you sell the business to the employees, and then you, you walk away, and that's what Anelli um, uh, uh, alluded to uh, a couple of days ago. And that's that's done all the time. I mean, it's it's easy to finance. I mean, it's, e it's, 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 it's again, it's an easy peasy deal because you don't have to fight over valuation. Um, the employees are buy are, are getting part of a company that they'd never have ownership in anything in their lives. They're just you know, and it's not that you're taking advantage of them. You're giving them, a, you know, like they used to say, a piece of the rock. You're giving them, you know, a piece, you know, and the. the uh, uh, bragging rights down at the local uh, bar or pub that they go to. Uh, and, and I saw a lot of coal mines back in the day when I was in the coal mining business um, that uh, the employees bought, you know, the mine that you're in, you know, uh, what, 500 miners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, they, if, if, and assuming it's profitable and assuming all these other things, I mean, the miners would love to own the fucking mine. You know, uh, nowhere, nowhere else other than the house they own are they, and, and the car that they may or may not own, are they ever going to, you know, get a, you know, something to, to plan for the future for? And it's not dissimilar with virtually all the other businesses. Now, if the, if the company's, you know, four years old or four months of that, that that's not the case, but these employee deals are businesses that have been around, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. Okay, YouTube.